Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Boiler Track Show, a show by Boiler Upload of the Rivals Network. Today, we have a very special guest joining us from all the way down in Argentina, uh, where the party is taking place following the World Cup. Former Purdue guard, pro basketball vet, author, director, a man of many talents, Mr. Kelsey Barlow. Kels, how are you? Well, what an introduction, Doug, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you for having me. I'm doing pretty well, though. I'm chilling. How are things down in Argentina? I know we were talking a little bit about it uh, before we hopped on here. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously championship vibes. I mean, I don't think they won it in like 30 years. So everyone's pretty happy. Everyone feels like Argentina's being well represented globally and obviously puts Messi up there. So everyone's proud of him, I suppose. Did you get out there and party with him at all? I, I can't afford to do it. You know, <laughs> I can't afford to do it. I go on the rooftop and I like look down at him. <laughs> on the street kind of going crazy but it's not my type of vibe to be honest that's special that's that that whole culture and vibe and that's it's insane down there like i you, i couldn't imagine that happening anywhere in the states like if the united states won the world cup the men's team obviously the women's team has won the last like three world cups or whatever uh, but if the men's team did that i feel like people don't really care all that much yeah, I agree. I think, but it's different. Like, you know, like if you walk down the street, like in anywhere in Argentina, or for the most part, anywhere in South America, from my experience, um, and you're like, yeah, I'm from the United States, they're kind of like, oh, like heaven on earth kind of place, you know? <laughs> so I think like, um, the United States kind of has that number one, like vibe, like expected to be number one. And nearly we put the money behind it. We kind of have that mentality. Whereas they kind of look like they kind of have the mentality of maybe no one sees us. Maybe people don't really know about us. Like maybe we're the underdog in the situation. So to achieve something like being number one in the most popular sport is kind of like, damn, we, we actually have something here in Argentina. That's kind of my perception of it. Yeah. And then like, like you mentioned, Messi, he, I mean, he's the goat now. There's no denying it. And even I'm not I'm not a big soccer guy, but from yeah. from what I understand, uh, this this made him the greatest of all time. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got like seven MVPs, basically. Ballon d'Ors. Mm -hmm. He's won the European Championship with his club team. He's won the South American Championship with Argentina. He's won the Global Championship with Argentina. I mean, like he's won everything. So, yeah, you can't really knock him at all. Now the reason that you're down there, obviously, uh, I mean you've been you've been a busy guy over the last, uh, I mean, few months, few years. Uh, yeah. You just you have your book coming out. Um, you had a movie that you just premiered. I was thankful enough to to be able to to watch the first screening of it. I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, what what's what's the last few few months been like for you with with everything you got going on? Yeah. So. Um... Normally, I'm just kind of out of touch with society for the most part, like how I live for the most part. So I was just living with my friend in Indianapolis, and we were just kind of checking it out, seeing what's going on, trying to get a better understanding of like how people are. And then we obviously did that movie premiere here in, uh, well, there in Indianapolis. And then uh, after that, it was just time to get my engine back going. So the team allowed me to do like a week to week here. And this is where I shot the movie. So mm. we're going to premiere the movie and I had to redo it in uh, with like a Spanish what do you call it? <laughs> narration. So we'll, 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 we'll produce that here and then I'll just get my engine going. So I'll practice with the guys and stuff like that. And then it's kind of go week by week here until I see what I want to do next as far as where I want to perform for the most part. So you're with the team right now, technically? Technically, yeah, yeah. So it's just week to week, so it's pretty good. It's pretty flexible, but it's great. You know, I just live in a hotel. They feed me. They pay me. And I just get better, man, and prove I got all the free time in the world, it feels like. So it's great. Bro, getting to know you, you feel like, it feels like you're the only person that that would happen to. Like, that that perfectly fits who you are as a person to have to have that type of opportunity. Yeah, well, I kind of, it's what I think about in a way, like, I don't know, I try to tell people a lot, like, I'm not really like a, a fisherman, I don't go fishing for the most part, it's kind of just put the time in and see what comes my way, so 
I think probably like it was like November 20th. I was like, all right, like I, I work out every day, but like I think it was November 20th. I told my my roommate, I'm like, bread, like I'm about to just like get the engine going and let's see what happens after 20 days. And then like probably like day 17, like I think they just hit me up on Instagram or whatever. And I was like, I didn't even reach for this. So this is pretty good. So we'll just go from here. And it's cool because I can uh, release the movie to these people because we're really, we're in Argentina, but we're at the end of the earth. Like I'm closer mm -hmm. to Antarctica than anything. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, film a movie of like these types of people and stuff, it's good for them because obviously they probably feel like no one knows about them, even within Argentina. So it'll be good. It's been pretty good vibes to kind of lay the red carpet down for whatever it's worth <laughs> You know, we try to give as much as possible while we're here. Yeah, that was probably my favorite part. The my favorite aspect of the movie that I saw, um, just seeing all the people and you interacting with them. Uh, it was really cool. A kid coming from Indy, um, obviously, we know that you moved around a lot um, as a kid uh, with your dad. But uh, seeing seeing you interact with with those those locals was was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they give you energy, so it's it's only right to kind of give it back, and then obviously you learn something that you've never really experienced just by interacting with people and kind of keeping an open eye to new environments. Now, talk a little bit about the red carpet that they kind of rolled out for you uh, that you mentioned. Man, like, I, <laughs> you know, I try to like keep my my mind focused because uh -huh. you know one day like this, like. One day they'll love you, one day they might hate you, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So you don't want to get too caught up in like how people are are doing doing you. But um, I don't know. Like I got like a lot of messages. I came to the games and like or the, the practices and stuff like that. They announced me the first day I got here, they threw like a, a big festival. Like, yo, they had no, I gotta send you a picture. They had it was wild. It was they had 30 well, I think it was lambs, bro. They had 30 lambs like around this fire, like dead lambs, right? They had 30 dead lambs around this fire pit, like for a barbecue, bro. And it had like two, three hundred people there. Like when I first <laughs> and I was like, yo, like <laughs> I was like, well, you know, when they made me give a speech, you know, they gave, I had to give a speech in Spanish. So I was just like, obviously, this is the best day of my life. Like, who, who can make this up? You know, so. I mean, it's different. It's a different culture, like, but to see them kind of like put forth the effort for whatever they have, it's like, I mean, it's quite amazing in my opinion. Dude, that's like some midsummer stuff. You ever seen that movie? <laughs> no, what is it? It's like this dude takes these people, like his friends back home. It's somewhere like in Europe, I think, where the movie takes place. And they like do all these different, um, like, oh like ceremonies and, and things like that and then the, spoiler alert they end up killing them all at the end but um it's just like that it it, it gives me that same vibe because they did they did a lot of stuff with animals i don't know if you'd seen the movie or not it's uh, wild. It you like, need to watch it though it's wild what is it called midsummer midsummer or midsummer so i think it's summer okay yeah, and no, I was like a biblical, you know, I felt like I was like Joseph or one of those guys, like sacrificing 30 lambs to the gods, you know, I was like, well, like, because their bodies, it's like, their limbs are like, two go up and then two go down. And then it's just the body, like kind of on a stake, it feels, bro, it's like. So they're all up like, like in the air or were they all on the ground? They're like on a stake, I think if I'm pretty sure they're like on a stake and they're like circled and it's, you know, it's not a grocery store. You follow me? It's no. not a grocery <laughs> store. They literally skin these lambs and just put them on like, but everyone was like, I don't think I've seen people in the States with these kind of faces over a five-star dinner. You know what I mean? So I was like, damn, this is pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting, but it's, it's a different life. Like, I think the exchange rate here, when I first came to Argentina in 2019, it was one US dollar to 55 Argentinian pesos. And now it's like one US dollar to 320 Argentinian pesos. So I mean, you can do the math, you get what I mean? So 
it's just a different it's a different way of thought you got me so that's kind of under those circumstances these people just went ahead and won the world cup so yeah. congratulations to them, you know it seems like you you really love this place i think it's i mean for me i could come at least probably two to a month each year it's at the end of the earth so mm. i don't know like if you're aware of environment or societies and stuff like that or like i like think about like mackie right if yeah. mackie is like the number one team of the country they're trying to defend their ranking the sound that that place is going to produce is something that can take like a c player up to like a b player or like an a you know what i mean just because the mm -hmm. sound that the fans are creating just ignites the player right here it's almost like the opposite so depending on like your personality type or like your self-belief or like the things you say to yourself there's no sound right and then during the summer like right now it's summertime it's the sun goes down at about 11 10 45 and comes up around 4 35 so the, the the sky is real beautiful and there's no sound so like i have high self-belief in myself or whatever it's worth so i don't have to listen to the anything but myself you get what i mean and that's like something i really trust and believe and sometimes when your society like the sound of what should be done or what he's doing or what she's doing or what they're doing or what you should do kind of can like cloud your judgment so like coming down here for like at least a month or two weeks and stuff like that really just clears the sound for the most part so it's nice that's crazy because that's something that people don't people can't do that like you're you're a rare breed in that in that sense because people people love to hear the outside noise whether it's positive or negative people love to be enamored with it and and get caught up in it being by yourself and 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 being in your own thoughts that's that's special yeah you know i've, I've gone through a few things like i'll tell you a funny story <laughs> quickly like when i when i when i first was dismissed from the purdue team you know like the day before mm -hmm. It was my birthday, bro. It was yeah. my birthday. <laughs> and so it was the first time I went to this bar at Purdue called the Cactus, I believe it's called. Mm. And so I go, and like, I don't remember how it went down, but I somehow was elevated, like, either on a chair or a mm. table. And I was, like, the highest person in the room. And I was, like, man, like, like in my head, I'm, like, man, everyone is kind of, like, looking at me with this, like, positive vibe, right? Mm. And I think I dunked on a beard soldier, like, earlier that week. So it was it was pretty positive. You get, <laughs> like, it was like, I, I remember just standing there like, man, like, I don't know what this is means or anything, but like, what, like, everyone is like vibingly, like staring at me. And then like the next day I get kicked off the team, right? So like, mm -hmm. imagine that the next day I get kicked off the team. So obviously it's like on the ESPN tick or whatnot, whatever. And then I'm like walking like to class or something like that. And like, literally like, <laughs> probably like this is when I knew life was real funny bro. it was like real funny to me like in my job get kicked off the team so like, I'm getting kicked off the team and like literally like I'm walking to class and everyone is like kind of doing me like this like I'm like did you uh -huh. just look away <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, you know so like when you when you got through like an experience like that you realize obviously the most important noise is like yourself because it can switch up any moment based on any decision you sort of make so yeah no i don't think i've asked you this have you ever made a return to the <laughs> to, to those bars that um end up getting you in trouble uh have i uh i i don't i don't think so i mean i've only been to the cactus that one time I don't, I don't, I've been to, I went to brothers, like, I think I went to like, bro, I went to like four or five <laughs> football games this year somehow. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't even know. I was just getting invited to Purdue football games somehow this year. And like, I kind of went about it like, like a typical fan, I guess, like with mm. the tailgating and like doing stuff like that. So I think we went to brothers like one time, like, I don't remember which game that was, but like I think I went to Brothers like once or something like that. 
Uh, I have it on record. I could look it up, but I don't. I don't. I'm not really like a bar guy, really. Like, yeah. Anyway, I just had a lot of friends, quote unquote. <laughs> you know? I just was like, it's all good if it's all good. I'm not really kind of like that, but you know, I have a lot of friends. You get me? So it yeah, was I feel good. that most definitely. Um, does does all that 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 situation and and everything that came from it, does that kind of make your time at Purdue bittersweet at all, or do you not look at it like that? No, I'm, bro, I don't, like, like, I grew up in Europe, for like, up until, like, age 10, so, like, mm. I really wasn't even watching college basketball like that or thinking about it, you know, so, and then, like, I tell people all the time, like, my parents went to Notre Dame, whether Notre Dame's a better school than Purdue or not, I personally do not know, you get me? But I didn't like Notre Dame people are annoying. You get me? They're like, oh, there's nothing better than Notre Dame. There's nothing better than Notre Dame. So when I went to Purdue, that was just kind of what was in my brain. Like, this isn't Notre Dame. This isn't, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever. So I didn't know. It just seemed like it was a good time. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't knock it for anything. Like, I think the coach is like, probably the funniest guy I've ever met in my life like real diligent guy I also love how he goes about it but he's funny bro you can't even like I'll get in trouble every time and I'm like man this dude is so cool and funny like <laughs> get in trouble because I get to talk to the dude more like no one like I was really bitter about it I had some dreams like afterwards like I guess regret but for my own decision making but like the environment the school itself like not nah, like it's it was dope really can you say negative about it you know can you say negative about anything you know so it was good yeah and it, I mean you so like you said you went to the bas or football games and then I know you and Matt went to some of the basketball games as well so you're yeah, you yeah. still come back and and are at least part of the Purdue family still well even in professional games you know like what mm -hmm. I rely on like at the end of the day, it's probably what I got taught at Purdue. So um, it's, I can't help it. Like, I think Matt, Coach Painter is really good at like defensive schemes and angles, like fighting through the screen, coming off the screen, like knowing how to read the defense, depending how they play the screen, stuff like that. So, and I think you can apply those rules to nearly any system. So that's basically what I use like as my ground zero on any team I go to. So I like to like always check up and see what's going on, if it's developed or, or not, or whatever, you know, or, like how it's being applied in today's game and stuff like that. So I think I went to like, like the Marquette game and then the, I went to a practice and I went to a practice. Mm -hmm. So I check in a little bit, you know, when they let me come through, I'll, I'll check in. You know? <laughs> How much do you talk to paint? I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked to him. Like I talk to him at the, when I see him, you know, I'll see him. Mm. Like I, I saw him with my dog one time, you know, <laughs> and he, and he had some funny, he's just a funny guy, bro. I, really like I could talk to him all day. Like I think he's probably top three funniest people I've ever met in my life, but I haven't talked to him. I I text messaged him like probably I did this data analysis on like salaries or whatever that's probably the last time I really texted him or whatever but I talked to him probably at the practice yeah when they practiced I think it was right before the season started so I had talked to him a little bit at the practice or whatever but I don't talk to him much now do you have any you called him one of the top three funniest guys you've ever met you have any good stories from him that you can share yeah that's a great point the second <laughs> point man <laughs> Dude, like the dude is, I'll tell you a funny story. This is probably a, a shareable story, but the dude is funny, bro. Like, like if you don't like the dude, it's like, yeah. you just don't have a sense of humor, in my opinion. Um, I think it was like the first day of practice at Purdue. And uh, we're like in stretching lines, you know, like 20 minutes to stretch was like the kind of the scenario. And I was on the ground kind of stretching and this like, you know, tall guy comes up behind me. It's obviously Coach Payton. And he's like, oh, you're wearing, you're wearing number 12, right? And uh, I think it froze. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like, you're wearing number 12. And mind you, I like low key forgot I was wearing number 12 because like when they called me for my jersey number, I was like, my first 
choice was 13. And they're like, oh, it's retired. And I was like, oh, I'll take 10. They're like, oh, it's retired. I was like, hey, fuck it, give me 12. You know, so I wasn't even like conscious of like, I was just like, they got all these retired numbers. Like, I kind of felt like, I didn't know who wore them. You get me? Mm -hmm. So obviously I know now, but um, so I'm, I'm in, I'm in the stretching line. And uh, he's like, yo, you're wearing 12. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm like, I'm wearing 12. He's like, you know who wore number 12? I'm like, bro, I don't really know anything about Purdue. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I wore 12, man. Like, I'm like, oh, what, a, what the fuck? I should have known that. You know, so it's like, got that little kind of dry dickhead humor. So it's like, you know, he's always going to challenge like where your brain's at in the situation for the most part. Yeah, paints. Paint's one of the funnest guys to talk to. Like, you, I don't think anybody's ever had a bad experience with him, honestly. Like, it, it's from a media perspective. I know players, certain players will have certain things to say about about him and, and the way he goes about things. But, like, just talking to him, like, about anything, not 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 only basketball. I mean, he just a, he's just a great dude. Yeah. Anybody who's funny is a great person. You know? mm-hmm. As long as you're funny, you're pretty cool with me. So what do you think about the team this year? Obviously, number one, <laughs> just defended their number one ranking at home for the first time in program history um, on, on pace to do something special this year. Um, nah, I mean, I think it's, I don't know. I guess the way I see the game, it's kind of like you got a junior and the Zach Eady guy. So from my perspective, like, like who in the paint, like, like you can't really, like he plays in the national team with Canada and stuff. So he's got like outside global experience. I mean, he just played with the lottery pick and Jaden Ivy. So, I mean, I'm sure what that guy is thinking about is like beyond what anyone who's checking up with him is thinking about. That's like, so you have that piece in the middle with the no defensive three seconds and all that kind of stuff. Like there's just no contest there. And then probably you have, in my opinion, the best player on the team is the point guard, like the Braden Smith guy. Mm, like, bro, good. like, I mean, like, I don't know, like what he does with the ball, obviously he can find the open man. He's willing to take the shot. He can beat his man. He can create a shot, obviously create for others. But, like, I remember when I saw him at the practice, I was talking to Coach Lust briefly, and I was like, yo, you could tell, like, what he's thinking about, like, you know, because Coach Painter was kind of, I guess, riding him a little bit, and, like, the way he, he took it in, I was like, yeah, what he's thinking about, like, not going to really be able to, like, shift him, it seems. So, I mean, with that mentality and that system in his, in his, in his game, I mean, then you have a five man to play with, and then you have some shooters and everything else on the side. Like, I mean, I don't see any. I mean, obviously you can get beat in this league, but I don't know, man. With a big like that, it's kind of, I mean, he's a junior too, but he's like, know. you know, like the best, this next best big man's got to be like a freshman on average or something like that. Like, and he's not going to be seven, four or whatever the hell it is. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I can't really see like, I can't see it. I can't see them. I mean, they could lose, obviously, but I just don't know how, like, with that big dude like that, you know, and they're real disciplined. Seems like they all get along in a way. So looks like a pretty good team, in my opinion. Yeah, they they got a scare at, at Nebraska a couple weeks ago now. Um, and that it was basically just came down to they couldn't shoot. I mean, they just had a cold shooting night. They've kind of had that the last couple games, and they've still been able to come out with a win now if they have a poor shooting game against someone like Indiana or Wisconsin or Michigan state might be a different story. Uh, but I mean, that's the only thing that would, that would slow them down with, with Zach E.D. and and all the guys around him that, uh, that you mentioned. I mean, dude, he's like, he is huge. <laughs> like, you know, what I mean? like you can just throw him the ball every single time and like as a human if I'm guarding him I have to make a decision if I want that contact like as a human being you know that's a huge mm-hmm. gap 
bro. Like, and he's <laughs> willing to try to dunk it. Like, what are we talking about here? And like, he's not like he's not like those. I guess they're more international players, like a Victor Wimbanyana or a Chris Hops Porzingis, where they're seven three, seven four, seven five, but they're sticks. I mean, they're they're tiny, they're rail thin. I mean, he's yeah. built too. He's like, I don't know if he's as big as Haas was, Isaac Haas, but I mean, he's sturdy. Dude, he is a big guy, bro. Like, I don't know. And his eyes, bro. Like, if you look at him in his eyes, his eyes seem pretty, pretty focused, bro. Like, even the game, he might miss one. He doesn't, it doesn't seem like he really gives a fuck. Like, he's trying to go get it, bro. Like, he's definitely got my vote. The point guard's got my vote. And everyone else compliments those two, in my opinion. Now, where do you think they stack up going back to your days, um, obviously, with the baby boilers and, and those teams? Uh, that's uh, – I think personally, like, the Braden Smith guy is looser than any of us at the point guard position. Like, he's looser. We, we probably have probably equal defense. Like, we're, we're putting pressure mm. on the PGs just as well as him. Um, Jawan controlled the paint nearly as good as Edie because he could kind of take you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, like, so what I mean by that is like, when you play defense in that system, from my, from my perception, maybe I'm not the most educated on the system, but I think <laughs> I might be. Um, if you're pressing up and then the guards, the wings are kind of playing the pass lane a little bit, so there's no easy catches. And then if you're going to get beat, there's just a horse in the at the rim willing to block shit. Like, it just makes the guard's job 10 times easier. So when Juwan graduated, I didn't realize it. Like, I realized <laughs> it then. Yeah, we really, no offense to whoever was on the team after Juwan left, but we really didn't have anything but blocking. <laughs> shit like that you know so i'm like man am I, am I worse at defense no i just don't have a dude in the paint holding it down for me like mm. that so i think i think to me their team it's a tough call bro we dealt with a little bit of in, like no one was really fucking with rob Humble, bro. like at the end of the day like no one, <laughs> like end of the day like you know what i mean like mm. i don't know how no one was really messing with him either. So I don't, I mean, but they, like, we were like two or three and we lost. They won. So you got to give it to them probably. You got, I mean, we weren't weak, but they're winning. Are they undefeated? Yep. 12, just moved to 12 and 0. Uh, the only <laughs> New Mexico and UConn at the time we're recording this, I don't know if they're playing again, but they're the only three teams in the country that are undefeated right now. Yeah, I think we started 13 and 0, and then like other teams were winning, winning out too. And then we went 13 and 3. We, we lost three straight. But like I like, I really like how the Braden Smith kid plays, honestly. Like if I could play like any player in the last, let's just say 10 years at Purdue, I'm rolling like him. I like how I roll. I'm rolling like I like him over Jaden Ivey. I like him over. Carson Edwards, really, I like this dude, bro. Like, I liked him in practice, and I was like, bro, he. It's not like he's really getting off, but like how he's going about it. Like, me looking into his eyes, like what he's willing to risk, how he's, you know, how he takes his chances and stuff like that. Yeah, I like him, bro. Like, I like him over all the top dudes who I think have played there in the last ten years, one hundred percent. Like, he's probably my favorite player I think I've ever seen at Purdue, one hundred percent. Is he really? That's crazy. Like. It's not even – I'm trying to think if it's close. Like, I look up to, like, Rob, Etwan, and Juwan. Like, they're dope. Mm -hmm. You get me? But, like, 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 I wouldn't really – like, I like I like how they are as humans. Like, like I like how Etwan is as a human. I like how Juwan is as a human. I like how Rob is as a human. I wouldn't model my game after not one of them. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I like – like, he's little. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm 6'6". Six, six, how Braden Smith is getting down on the court night in and night out. Like I could watch him all day over really all those dudes in the country. Really? He's getting busy, bro. He gets busy, bro. Like, what are we talking about? 
is he knows it too. He's like, I'm getting busy out of Westfield. I'm getting busy. So yeah, he's probably my favorite player, hundred percent. He brings just like level of intensity and just like focus and mindset that I don't think Purdue's had from a point guard since Kramer, honestly. Oh, since Kramer. In term not not in terms of their play, like in terms of like their ability to shoot and their defense, like in terms of focus and mindset. I mean, who? Because he's just he's fearless, and that's how Chris was. <laughs> At least from the outside looking in, you might you might have a different perspective on that, but. I just I like Chris. You get me? Yeah. Like he was a senior when I was a freshman. Like, really, really learned a lot from Chris. Like, you know, I love Chris. Actually, oh, like no. he's a funny, funny oh, guy. No. <laughs> oh, like, honestly, I could talk to Chris all day. Right? He's mm-hmm. so funny. Bro. Like, he is like, I like him, bro. He takes himself serious. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I like. Him. But nah, hell no. Nah. You can't compare Braden Smith to Chris Kramer, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like listen, 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 listen. I'm not saying like their games are similar in terms of what they produce on the court with with like their defensive ability and things like that. I'm just saying like that's who he I mean between Chris and Braden, the point guards that produce had is like you yourself, Blue Jack. Ronnie Johnson, Eric Hunter Jr., PJ Thompson. I mean, none of them, none of them are like, I'm gonna get in trouble from this. I hope Lou Jack doesn't see this, especially. Uh, so who, what, what are we what are we talking about? There's no there's no sensitivity in the game. It's competitive. <laughs> what are we talking about? He just I don't know, Braden Smith's just different. He's just yeah, and he's by, cool. by the time he gets to sorry, go ahead. You said by the time he gets to what? By the time he's a senior. I mean, senior? You got him in school until he's a senior? I don't think he'll – shoot, he might leave soon. Oh, I don't know. Why does he have to stay – like, do you just want him to graduate and, like – No, 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 no. Or, like, what? I mean, what – I don't know. I, I, he's definitely not leaving after his freshman year. Why he, not? He's not – Kelsey, he's not leaving after his, his freshman year. I guarantee you he will not leave. Guarantee? Yes. You think he's going to get drafted in the first round? After Who's this better? Who's better than him? That's not how NBA scouts are, though. NBA teams. They don't want the best players. No, but he's – You're going to get me in trouble, bro. I'm not going to get you a show. I'm just trying to do the mathematics. Like, do you want him just to be like, hey, man, Braden graduated in four years. I graduated in four years. Or like, No, 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 no. Oh, I'm just not that at all. I'm just saying – I'm just saying he's not leaving after this year. I could see him how leaving after his sophomore, junior year. I'm, how many years did Jaden do? Two. All right, bro. And Like, he's way better than Jaden, bro. Like – Stop it. Like, come on, bro. Stop this. What are we talking? This dude's a dude. What are we talking about? Like, like who? Like, okay, like they've played Duke. They've mm-hmm. played was it Gonzaga? Gonzaga or yeah. They played Gonzaga. They played Florida State on the road. They played, I don't know, bro. They just played Davidson, whoever they just played right there. <laughs> Bro, like, who has come close to who has close who has come close to slowing him down? Like, well, who's depends like, on how it depends on how you look at it from like a scoring perspective. He hasn't been able to, except for the market, the market game, he did pop off, but um, he hasn't been able to string together. Maybe that's like, I mean, he's a pass first guy, honestly, but he hasn't been able to pop off offensively consistently. Um, so if you're looking at it from that perspective, but like from controlling the game and and being a facilitator from the point guard position, I mean, no one's really been able to, yeah. to slow him down. I nope. like I feel, I feel like he helps the team get a great shot 
and he helps the team set the tone on defense nearly 80 to 90 percent of the game bro he gets a little gas now and then like it's a little tired but he's doing a big job bro like <laughs> what a guy man like i didn't I'll know you were all- huh i didn't know you loved him that much bro he at like i i'm trying to be fair here man like I liked Car- Carson might be my second favorite. You get me? Like mm-hmm. Carson got busy. Like Carson got real Carson's, busy. He's fun to watch. Carson had a little demeanor about himself too. Now, like I liked Carson. I saw him live a few times. Ball State game. However, bro, the Braden Smith dude is with everything, bro. He's with it all, bro. He's with it all, bro. Like, come on, bro. I got him going one and done, maybe one and done, maybe seventeenth pick, one and done. Bro. <laughs> like I don't know, like he might he might like West Lafayette, might have a nice little apartment up there that like he doesn't seem like he wants to leave. I don't know, but if he's if his eyes say what they say to me, it looks like he's going for it all, bro. To me, it looks like he's going for it all. So you know, he's I, don't, probably... I don't know. It's just gonna <laughs> depend on on what NBA teams think of him. And obviously I, there's no way of us knowing that, uh, at least right now. I'll text, I'll text a couple of my guys who, who are in a couple of front offices and see, see what they got, got on them. You know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Honest opinion. We're up to like, hey, if he wins the national championship, we got him. Just go to, like Tyus Jones, bro. Stop <laughs> it. Bro. He, that's as good as Tyus Jones, bro. That, Tyus okay, that's Jones. That's a very good comparison, honestly. And what did Tyson do? He went, won the national championship, got the fuck out of there. So all Brady Smith's got to do, if you're saying it's going to be tough for him, just go win the national championship, be the 27th pick to Indy, like Tyus was to Minnesota. I'm not saying get TJ McConnell up out of there. Maybe someone even better. <laughs> I don't know. Bro, I, I mean, bro, like, he's rolling, bro. He's dope, bro. He's dope, bro. I think what Painter. I-, I think Painter compared him to Peyton Pritchard, uh, who's on the Celtics now, I believe. <laughs> I think Coach is really good with words, bro. Because like, I would compare him to someone different. You follow mm-hmm. me? But I think like him saying Peyton Pritchard, like. The average ear is going to believe that. And then they're going to be like, yeah, Peyton Pritchard, like NBA, white guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, Ray's busy, bro. Like he gets like, they play different to me. They play a little bit different. Like, like even like how he moves his body, bro. Like just how he moves his body alone, bro, is in like, watch when he goes to the floor and how he gets up, like, I moves his body, bro. Like, I, Peyton Pritchard, I, you get me? I feel him. Paint, you're a genius for saying that. I'm rolling with it, but I got him one and done, man. That would be insane. That's something I don't think anybody would have expected. Hey, man, one and done, bro. Like, who, like, he's the number one point guard on the number one team. Like, what more do you want from the guy, bro? <laughs> freshman bro what more do you want from him he's able to put himself above the pack like what do you want him to do yeah dude i don't know <laughs> i don't know Mackey another year like maybe like, who knows let, let's get one can you name the last one and done from purdue i don't know if there's ever been one has there big dog wasn't was he I, he might have been I don't know any Purdue history before 2009. <laughs> well, I was nine years old then, so I'm I'm not super well versed in in the 80s and 90s. But Big Dog might have been. I, don't know, I feel like he went for two. Oh, I gotta look this up now. Okay, so we can do a better one. Has there been a one and done under Coach Painter? No. Because the only one that was the one that was closest was Jaden. Uh, no, 
This Big Dog played two years for Purdue. And then he so, left and was the number one overall pick. I don't so, – I don't – off the top of my head, I don't think there's been – I'm sure there has been one at some point in time, but I can't think of them right now. There's definitely been nobody under paint. Because Biggie stayed – Biggie stayed two years. Ivy right. stayed two years. Carson was three. Carl Landry was – was he a four-year player? Before 2009, man. Jeez. <laughs> Bro, you got the Google. You got Google. You can look this stuff up. That's how I got in the game. <laughs> um, You're right, man. I could probably go to the local Indiana library. There's probably a basketball encyclopedia of all the Indiana schools as well. Probably is. Yeah, dude, um, that's what we're saying, bro. We're saying it right now first. You heard it here first. Braden Smith, the first player, at least under Coach Painter's watch, one and done, bro. One and done, bro. You know, that's what you should, that's what you should be telling Coach Painter every day. Hey, Coach, who's going to be your next point guard next year? Like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be, man? This guy's gone, right? He's gone. You know? That's what's got to happen, man. Hey, Did you man. ever hear the John Calipari story? Uh. Uh-uh. So John Calipari was coaching Dewan Wagner at Memphis. This is a, this is how the story was told to me, right? So don't you know I don't get sued for <laughs> defamation or anything if dudes ten people lie to me, but this is what was told to me. Dewan Wagner is at Memphis, and Dewan Wagner is pretty good, whatever, whatever, right? So Dewan Wagner comes into Coach Calipari's office, like I'm about to come back from my second year or something like this, right? Or should I come back along the lines where he was on the fence mm-hmm. to certain people back? John Calipari rips up, rips up his like scholarship paper for the next year because you have to like re-sign it at mm-hmm. the time each year, right? Rips up and he's like, bro, you're too good for this shit, bro. Go <laughs> to the NBA. Like, if Matt Coach Matt Painter does not do something like this for Braden Smith, oh my goodness, bro! What are we talking about? Bro? This is what's got to happen. This is what's got to happen. <laughs> I love. Hey, it. this Braden's trying to come back to school. Hey, no, man, you're too good. <laughs> Go ahead, professional man. Unless you want to like just get a degree or something, which he can do online using Google. You know, so dude, this no. has turned into the Braden Smith celebration podcast i'm looking for maybe a signed jersey at the end of the season you know <laughs> I, i'll be the biggest when it comes down to it jeez <laughs> uh, <laughs> we went uh we i know we went a little over on time um i'm, I'm gonna wrap this thing up uh Kels, uh thank you for coming on um as always appreciate you let everybody know where they can follow you uh, when and where your your book will be available and and where the movie is so they can watch it okay great so the movie is on stambi.com s-t-a-m-b-i.com uh the books we're still we're still distributing those underground so tbd but everything oh you got There's a book enough. look at that Unbelievable. Yeah, bro, you, you're the one that gave it to me Wow, man. Look at that. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Phenomenal. Sarah, Sarah Parfit Jabbar did the artwork. Shout out to her. But yeah, everything you can get at stompy.com for the most part. You know, the movie, any updates, anything. Maybe we might add a page of Braden Smith to the website now that <laughs> you got me going. So <laughs> that's how I see it. Well, Kelsey, uh, again, thank you for coming on. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, stay safe down there in Argentina. Um, stay safe coming home whenever that may be. I'll try my best, man. I appreciate it.